In this tutorial, we're going to cover how to set up your strip sections or detail callouts. Okay, so let's just open up our sample project that we've been working on. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the section because you're going to use the section to reference where your details are being extracted from and where they are located. So you need a reference on a section, elevation or plan, where these callouts are going to be taken from. Okay, so we've got many situations here that we'll need to maybe detail, show more detail regarding how certain connections work between your windows and shop fronts and beams, etc. So I'm going to use this section over here and explain how you would go about setting this up. Okay, we could also use this section here is a strip section as well. Okay, for this exercise, I'm just going to use this section over here. Okay, so there's two options that we need to consider here. The first thing we need to do is actually go and get the call out working. So you'll need to go to view, you'll need to go to call out, and we're just going to use the, the straightforward. You've got two options. You can either sketch, so here you can go and sketch how this should look. Okay. And you can see now it's quite, you can use all different types of shapes if you need. You can say reset crop. Okay, that doesn't really matter. Okay, so let me just delete that. Yes, I'll delete the view as well. Just remember, every time you make a call out, it will make a, a view for that call out. I'm just going to use a standard call out. For now, I'm not going to use this option. Okay, you can reference another view. But for now, we're just going to use the call out option because I want to generate a call out of this section. So what, what does it do? It takes that area and then creates another section in essence. Okay, so it takes a cut up view already, a plan, elevation or section and just literally cause, creates a call out of what you're viewing in that section. You can see here, it's now created this call out for me. On plan, so you're not going to have, it's very rare that you'll see that it'll create a a call out of that section okay so it's not like a section okay you could do this with the section as well you could create a little strip section that's an option but because we've got a section already okay that's what we'll do however here's another scenario that we could use but in this scenario we'll just use a section so what happens sometimes we can also allocate a strip section through this wall as well but just remember that is a traditional section and the workflows that we'll cover now will work exactly the same way. So this is in essence a strip section and we just remove this one head and it will look something, sorry let me just do that again, select the section, it will have a tag on the one side. Okay, okay I see I've made a, a mistake here. So on your call out your section tags, the one will need to be just a tail. Okay, so that's important. The one will need to be a tail. So your tail, head and tail, so one will need to be a tail. If I say none for now, so it's, there's none for your tail, but you just want to use that traditional type tail. So let's just try and get that back in play. So if that does happen, just remember. Okay, so I just want it tail standard. Okay, just means that it leaves a it leaves this mark, okay? But in essence, actually, all I want you to show is that this is a strip section, okay? So you're cutting a strip through that. And if I go to this, if I go to the section now, okay, section four, you see there I'm creating a strip section, okay? A callout is doing the same thing. It just works a bit differently because you're using a section to reference your. Um, strip section for example or you can use a plan so if you don't want to use a strip section that is located on your elevation so doing a proper detail of that a proper strip section of that section and you want to use a different location then you'll use that option where you are actually using the section marker okay so you're using this option okay so just remember that okay Anyway, we're going to get delete that. We don't need that because we're going to use our section, which is quite common. So we're going to go back to our section. Okay, so what has this done? It's created a new view called section AA callout1. But 
I'm going to rename this view for the time being just so that we understand it better. I'm going to call the strip section one. Okay. All right. Now that I've got strip section one in play, just remember by default, you need to go and reset up your views to be fine. Generally, these are one to 20, one to 50. I'll make this one to 20 for now just so that you can see an impact. And you can see a lot of the drafting stuff hasn't come through. However, it's so easy to grab this information. So let me grab this information. Okay, we can copy all this information across. But for now, I'm just going to focus on setting this up correctly on your sheets so it looks correct. Okay, just remember you'll copy all these notes and texts across later on. But for now, we just want to set up our view. In our second step of this video, we'll then cover how you go about copying this information across. Okay, so first things first, we've got a strip section. What I'd like to do and tend to do is set up a sheet. Okay, I know a lot of you, let me just delete that. Sorry, I wanted to use my template. And use your A1 sheet. What tends to happen is sometimes these sections won't fit on the sheet. So let's just put this on the sheet for the time being and you can see 1 to 20 this will work in my situation but not always so I'm going to show the workflow how you will then go about cutting this section up into different little sections of this call out okay so let's just leave this in our sheet for the time being okay so how do we go about breaking up this call out or strip section into smaller chunks so that you can actually make it fit on a sheet for example so let's just get rid of the sheet for now I'm going to use a rectangle in the background, so detail line, and I'm going to use a rectangle. I'm going to use an A3 sheet in this instance, just an outline to explain what exactly is going on here. Okay. Okay, so if that was my A3 sheet or A2 sheet, let's maybe make it an A2 sheet rather. Okay, so that was an A2 sheet, for example. And then all I'm going to do quickly is offset it by 10 mil. Just remember, you need a safe margin because most plotters will need a safe margin. And then just press offset again and then tab. So you get all of those. Okay, so if that was my sheet, and you can see that the strip section will not fit on my sheet. Okay, so I need to break the strip section up. So how do we go about doing that? So go back to your strip section. Okay, here we're going to have to say, we're going to have to duplicate this view, but now there's a very specific type of view that we use in relation to the prior. So call this the master and we're going to have slave views or so parent and child. A lot of 3D uh, software use that um, terminology called parent and child. So this is your parent section and you're going to have a series of children. So we're going to use the duplicate as dependent, meaning what this will do now is it will create a dependent view on this primary parent view. So we're going to probably need about four of them. So I'm going to have a, a section over here, one over here, one over here, and one maybe at the bottom. So I'm going to need to duplicate this four times. Duplicate with as dependent, <clears throat> duplicate as dependent, and then duplicate as dependent. <clears throat> okay, so one, two, three, and four. What I tend to do very quickly is just rename these. So let's make this A. Just remember, use a naming convention that you can track, which is logical. That's totally up to you. Okay. Now, on this strip section, we're going to move this section up. So that's going to be my first part of my strip section. Now, what's interesting, if we go back to the primary section, you now you can see what each, and you can see when you hover on that, it's telling you what part of the view you want to see. Okay. So that's section A. This one, I want to only show this part of my strip section. So I just want to show that part there. Go back to this one. This one's only going to show this information, so I might need a bit more information there because we've got louvers and those type of things. We could extend that out for now to show 
the full extent. So maybe this one we're just going to extend a bit out. That's fine. And then this one will be my footing or as I enter. Okay, so okay, now if we go back to our parent view, you'll notice we can now go and edit what you're looking at in that view as well. Okay, so this one I can maybe extend just so we can see a better. So here, this view is just purely to help you. You can annotate in this view as well, but you want to do a lot of your annotation in these separate little views as well. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our sheet. So now you can see that this view will not fit in our sheet. So let's get rid of that view. I've just deleted it. So now I'm going to start using my little dependent views. So 1A, 1B. Now you can see you can start creating... And we'll use cut lines. So in my second tutorial, I'll show you how to add detail information so we can represent cut lines between the two, these different um, parts of my call out. And when you drop the view and you hover, you'll notice it's always trying to line up. You see the grids will start lining up. Okay, so that's very important. So let's pull that up a bit and we'll fine tune and show you how to fix a lot of this before we carry on. And that's the last few that needs to go in my sheet. So go back to your sheet. Now you're going to grab the last one. Can you hover? And now that blue line, lock it. Okay, now you can see, and we can use break lines, but now you can see that that whole strip section now will fit on a smaller sheet. Okay, what we need to do next, select all your views. and don't Just select the viewports themselves, and you need to say title with no line, no title. The only title that I'm going to use will be this title over here. So I'm going to select this last detail and I'm going to give it title with no line. Okay. I know this is 1D, but we're going to change this on our sheet just to say strip section one. Okay. So let's just go over here and I'm going to go and say title on sheet. You can copy this information, by the way. I'm just going to copy this first bit, control C, and title on sheet is going to be strip section one. Okay. Now I can go and nudge these to work a bit better with each other. Now you can see this is starting to fit pretty well on my sheet. Okay, this one I can nudge up a bit. This one nudge up. Okay, so here, now we've got this complete strip section and now it'll fit on our sheet. Now, the last thing we need to do just to make this work a lot better is switch off. So the only grid head that we'll maintain will be the grid head on this view over here. Okay, so this one, I'm going to go here, just untick that, switch that grid head off, go to that one, likewise, switch that grid off. Okay, so now we've got our basement, well, our ground floor, and we're going to keep the levels as well, we'll fix all that up as well. So at least now we've got some good information. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is just go neaten up, so go back to this view, view, close and active views, you don't want too many views open. So now you can double click on the viewport and I'm going to move and just edit this detail stuff just so that we can start neatening up this view. Okay. Likewise in here. You'll see now that you don't want this information because you're going to have a, a, a detail item that will create a cut line for you to show you where and how these sections are put together. Okay, but for now, I'm just using this to neaten this up a bit. Sometimes it's easy just to do that in the actual view itself. And just remember, on a sheet, you can also access each one of these views just by using the sheet. Okay, so these lines you want to get back as close as possible. Okay, so here we can neaten this up. This we might want to jump out to the side. I use a reference line sometimes or reference plane just so that we can start lining this information up because each one of these, let's just go back here. You want to um, try and get these in a line. Okay, so that's something that we can do on the sheet as well. So for example, double click in this view and pull this out. Here you just hover, you try and get as close as possible. Okay. And just remember, if you click on a viewport, you can say activate view. And while you're in the viewport, just click away from anywhere that's nothing, it's got nothing selected. And you can 
say deactivate view. So that's another option. Sometimes double click, it depends on your mouse. Doesn't work as well. So just remember, select the viewport, activate view, okay? And then click viewport again and say deactivate view. Okay, so click away, right click, deactivate view. Okay, so now you can see this is starting to work pretty well. Now I can drag that back to there. You can zoom in and try and get it exact. But as long as everything just kind of lines up nicely, here we don't have a level because we had a step in our level and we can use a reference level. But for the time being, this is the first part of a, a two-part series. I might add some more details. In the next tutorial, we'll then cover how to go and add information to each one of these so adding the detail items that we've created and adding a lot more detail and hiding stuff in the background. So I'll make this a one of three part um, step tutorial. Okay, try and keep the tutorials quite nice and small. Okay, but in essence, you can see this is pretty straightforward. Okay, now the last step that we need to consider, is so if we go back to our section now, if we go back to section AA, you're going to notice there's going to be a whole lot of these call-out details. Okay, this is important, but what I like to do is I'm going to isolate category. So in my view section here, go here and go and isolate category. What I tend to do is I actually hide all this information. Right-click and I'm going to go and say hide and view elements. Okay, then just to make this a lot neater, what I tend to do now is I'll go and create a new call-out. But with this call out, before I place it, I'm going to change it here and say reference only. And I'm going to reference my strip section, uh, strip section 1D. I'm going to use that and then use this again. And you'll notice that it'll come up with this, the detail number and what sheet it's on. And it'll say sim, meaning it's not linked to a live um, strip section or call out detail. Okay, that's just letting you know that it's referencing another view that doesn't have a live link. Okay, that's fine because we'll understand what that means. So here I can simply do something like that and you can see now this looks pretty neat. Okay, and on your sheet, if I went back to my sheet, it'll look neat as well. What I tend to do now is go back here and I change this detail number on this one to 1. Okay, it's going to tell me it's going to give me an issue because some of these are ready. So I, I just simply go and change this to A, change that to B. So my detail numbers I'm changing. I'll explain what this does later. And that'll be C. But this one will be 1. It just means that if I go back to my section, that it's referencing 1. That's a detail number on that sheet. Generally, we do show detail numbers, but in this case, don't, don't worry about it. It's just, it's a reference for strip section one. Okay, so if we went to strip section one, all we're trying to do is just tell the contractor on site, this is strip section one, and if you looked at the sections, for example, he'll be able to deduce that this is a strip section, and it's on that sheet. Okay, so strip section one. So that's all we do. So now you can see in my section, this is quite neat. Okay. And if you went back to our section view, you'll see that this will read quite neatly on my section view. Okay, so very neat. And then on this sheet, you can see now this is starting to take shape. Just remember this is an A3 sheet that we're trying to work on. And now you can nudge the stuff. Now you can go and add all your notes, your details, but we'll cover that in the next um, two tutorials in this regard. Okay.